1. My zoo has some domestic goats, and kids can come in and pet them, and brush them for free, or feed them for a dollar at certain times. The yard was sandy with a wooden fence. There were two connected barns at the far end for the goats to have a break if they wanted it. Behind the barn was a goat pen, also goats only, and the hay barn, keepers only. This entire exhibit stretched about 40 to 50 feet, 12 to 15 meters, parallel to the path in the zoo that was around 15 feet, 4 meters wide. Besides this, there were also lots of play structures goats like to climb, so besides some smaller ones like a seesaw and a tire tower sort of thing, there was also a big one. There was a platform that was about 3 feet, 0.9 meters tall, or about 7 or so feet, 2 meters from the entrance to the gate. On the platform was a step ladder that went up to a little kind of castle thing. Think kids' playgrounds at the top. From the castle, the path continues to the side, parallel to the path, and directly above the fence line to the other end of the yard, so it's on top of the goat barn. About halfway across the roof of the barn, the path descends to another platform, six feet or one meter away from the entrance to the barn. The path is altogether about 15 to 20 feet in the air, that's four to six meters. The parts of the path that go up and down to the platforms have a railing near the upper part, as does most of the high platform. The area that sits on top of the roof does not. All of this equipment is only for the goats, and kids are not allowed on it for numerous reasons. So, one, it was built for the goats, two, it is in an area the goats can go to take a break from people, three, safety! Not only is the platform incredibly high, crack your skull open if you fall high, the railings are not high enough to be safe. When maintenance people go up there, they have to wear harnesses because the railings aren't high enough to be safe for people according to law. It's only safe for the goats. Obviously, these are all valid reasons that children are not allowed on the playground. We do try to tell them that when they enter, but that doesn't always work out. Most parents are sensible enough to see that it isn't safe for their child. That's about all the background info you need. Hope it makes sense, and sorry if it was long. Now on to the story. It's about 2pm, a decently busy time in the goat yard, but not as bad as noon time. I am currently manning the gate, meaning I let people in and out, and explain the rules when I notice out of the corner of my eyes. I am lifting her kid onto the platform nearest the entrance gate. I figure they must not have heard my speech and head over. Sorry guys, this is for the goats only, I explain to them. This is usually enough for people to get down, so I turn around and head back to the gate. I look back a second later, and they're still there. I head back over and let them know that the structure isn't safe for people, a deterrent for most parents who want to keep their kids safe. The kid looks disappointed, so I point out that there is a playground around the corner, not visible from the goat yard, but easy to find if she wants to climb on things. E.M. Butson. She wants to pet the goat up there. Why can't she go pet it? There is a goat laying down in the shaded castle area. I was honestly surprised they seemed to have been ignoring my previous instructions. I know neither of them was hard of hearing. Both times they acknowledged me, just chose not to obey. The area up there is only for the goats, and it's not safe for people. I'm not even allowed up there. I explain. I sometimes say I'm not allowed, I'm not, to make kids feel better, kind of like solidarity. EM looks at me like I'm nuts, pretends she didn't hear me, and continues to egg the entitled daughter up the ladder. I am exceptionally pissed at this point. But my first priority is to make sure that the kid does not reach the top of the ladder. No matter how many times I warn them, if she falls we'd still get sued. However... I am obviously not about to touch this random kid, that's not okay. I throw my arm in front of her as a visual stopper since clearly verbal isn't working. She's low enough that I still can reach, but not very high. Again, I'm very careful not to touch the kid and my arm is around four or so inches from her torso. EM loses it. She goes off on me, yelling at me for assaulting her kid, discrimination, assaulting her, obstruction of rights, and just about everything else under the sun. I find it important to mention at this time that I am a minor. Her screaming had caught the attention of the four people in the yard, thankfully no little kids besides the entitled daughter were around, 
as well as my head keeper is. Obviously, Iz was fuming because this random lady was yelling at a 15-year-old. So she stomps on over and puts herself between me and the EM. What a queen, though. She's like my fave keeper. I still have my arm up in front of the entitled daughter in case she tries anything, and to prove I'm not touching her. When Iz comes over, she turns around to see what's going on, so I take my arm down. She's still on the ladder. Iz doesn't even try to be nice and demands to know why EM is yelling at me. She says something along the lines of, She was being discriminatory and wouldn't let my child go up to pet that goat. Then she assaulted my baby. Iz isn't having it. She roughly explains that Entitled Daughter needs to get down from the ladder right then or else she will call security. Yam holds her ground and asks why we have goats if the kids can't pet them. Iz explains that it's important for the goats to be able to get away from people at any time if they need a break, and again mentions that the structure is not safe for children. Iz says that E.D. can pet another goat unless the goat in the structure comes down. At this point, the entitled daughter throws a tantrum. She wants to pet the goat at the top of the tower. No other goat is acceptable. E.M. demands that we bring the goat down if E.D. isn't allowed up. Iz says that we're not going to do that. We can't go up there and it would be wrong to move the goat. At this point, E.M. is infuriated but realizes she's not getting anywhere with us and asks us to point her to management. Iz directs her to the exit and E.M. finally leaves with E.D. screaming in tow. And we never saw her again. Two. As some necessary background information, I had recently moved from my parents' place into a condo. I took my belongings with me, and among those belongings was my cat. His name is Milo, and he's a Havana brown bobcat mix. Important detail for later, his fur is very dark brown, but it looks black most of the time. He's been my loyal, chunky boy for six years at the time, and so yeah. He was definitely making the move with me. A girl needs her emotional support cat in times of change. Now, I didn't know it at the time, but I had myself a lovely neighbor just across the street from me. An entitled mother and their kid, who I can only guesstimate was about six or seven years old. They hadn't come out to meet me or anything while I had been moving into my new place. Of course, I don't blame them. I'm very much an antisocial introverted individual myself, Sort of the reason why I'm living with just my cat, you know? Anyways, I'm all moved in and busy unpacking and all those requisite things that come with a move. And Milo decides he wants to go outside. He's an indoor cat, but he has a hankering for chomping on some grass from time to time. And me, being the indulgent cat mom I am, indulge him. I put on his bell collar to make sure I know if he tries any funny business. It almost ran right into a street once when I'd had my back turned. And I'm not going through that kind of scare again if I can help it. And soon enough, we're chilling at the little grassy area just outside my little condo. And what do you know, a minute later, here she comes. EM. She's got her kid in tow when the little guy spots my ball of fluff. He makes a beeline over to him, hand outstretched for pets. Milo is a very chill cat, you could pretty much do anything to him and he won't bat an eye. So I have no issue in letting this kid pet my cat. I absolutely would have done the same thing at his age, so eh, let the kid pet the cat. EM though, who, oh boy, does she have a problem. She comes over and snatches normal kid's hand as if he were about to touch a snake or something. Normal kid, what the hell do you think you're doing? That's a black cat. What have I told you about black cats? Oh, it's all right. He won't bite or anything. She turns to face me. Your cat is black, though. They carry sickness, and I don't want my son getting infected from the cat. You should get rid of it. That's not happening. If you don't want to pet him, that's fine. He's literally just eating grass. It's not hard to just, you know, leave him alone. Uh, Mom, can I pet the cat? The lady says it's okay. No, there's a reason people say that black cats are bad luck. They get people sick. All right, lady, he's not going to get anyone sick, and... 
if you want to get technical about it, he's actually a chocolate brown. His breed is called Havana Brown. They're bred to be dark brown. Uh, yeah, whatever. She holds out her hand impatiently to the kid. Come on, NK, we're leaving. The kid looks sad, but takes his mom's hand. They walk off, leaving me in a state of... Okay, that actually happened. Milo was unfazed, like the good lazy boy he is. I love him so much. Nothing much happened after that. At least not for a couple of days. Soon enough, nice kid realized I lived close by. He's been visiting every now and then, and for one purpose. To pet my cat. I'm happy to oblige him. And so I've been happily letting him come pet Milo whenever he wants since. EM apparently doesn't know. Nice Kid tells me he doesn't tell her anything. So, victory for me and Nice Kid. 3. I'm a part of a camping group that travels together to different sites. The whole idea of the group is so that you can camp with people you know rather than people you don't know. This story happened years ago, but I still remember everything that happened. I was around six years old, and still scared by the incident. The leader of the camping group was good friends with the owner of the campsite. Sometimes the owner let us camp for free, but in return we help with problems around the campsite. We had done this multiple times, and were always happy to help out. So we were camping for the weekend, right afternoon till Sunday about midday. We started work on Saturday after setting up caravans and tents on Friday night. To help out, we went through the forest area of the site to cut back overgrown and dangerous trees, to pick up litter and fix a broken fence that people from the building blocks behind the site kept sneaking in from. The first few hours were fine. Lots of kids being energetic and running around with a little picker in a bin bag. Adults started cutting back overgrown bushes and everything was great. Remember when I said there were apartment blocks behind the site? There was a big clearing with a perfect view of the flats exactly where we were all standing. A lady shows up at the outside of the fence and starts asking questions. No one thinks much of it and calmly responds as the lady seems quite nice. The conversation was a bit like this. What are you doing? One of the adults responds, Oh, we're just cutting down this tree as it's old and dangerous. They were holding a saw and just started sawing into an old tree. It's so nice of you. Are you friends with the campsite owner? Yep. Oh, that's so sweet of you lot. Well, I'll leave you all to it then. Keep up the good work. She left after that. Like I said, she was actually really nice at first. And no one thought much of it and continued on with the work. An hour or so later, the guys had finished cutting two trees as they were in the way of the path and were dangerous. I had just finished swimming in the pond and fishing out litter with my friends that were a few months younger than me, about five. The guys had moved on to another tree that had grown into the center of the path and would need lots of work to remove. And so returned the lady. What are you doing? We're cutting this tree down. Shut up! At first it was sweet of you, but now you're just cutting trees down for fun. It was not for fun, and it was very tiring. What? No, that's not... What? I said shut up. You're harming the environment. The Earth needs these trees, and you're killing the planet. I remember shouting something at her, but one of the adults told me that it wasn't worth it, and he just ignored her. The lady pulled out her phone and started recording us. These people are horrible. I'm recording you. Everyone will see how bad you are. Another lady showed up, and I'm guessing she was the lady's daughter, and was holding who I'm guessing was her own child. That girl just stood there clearly embarrassed and trying to not get involved, but also calm the lady down. The adults started worrying about the kids' faces being online without permission, and started covering all the kids' faces, including mine. She stood there as the lady started yelling swears at us left and right. One of the adults had enough and ordered all of the kids to leave and go to the group tent where our mums were making a group lunch to reward our hard work. All of the kids ran with tears running down their face as the lady continued to record and shout at us. An hour later, the adults came back to the group and said they had to threaten to call the police to get her to leave them alone. They didn't say anything else about the situation and have moved on from it, but I am still traumatized and whenever we go back to the campsite, 
I took every opportunity to not go to that same bit of fencing in fear of meeting that lady again. And before you make fun of me, please remember that I was only six, and I had never met anyone like that before. Four. This happened two years ago. I had two graduation ceremonies. One in the ninth grade and one in the tenth grade. The one in the ninth was awesome. I finally stepped out of myself and I sang in front of over 300 people. You Raised Me Up by Alina Park. I was so happy and everyone loved it. I could see my grandpa raising his chin because he was so proud. After that, every teacher knew me as the girl who sang in the ceremony. At the start of the next year, my class teacher, my classmates, and the vice principal immediately asked me if I could do that again, and I was honored. I was bullied and very unpopular for most of my life, so it was really nice to get praised so much. I also really loved to sing, so I obviously said yes. Fast forward till the end of the year. All grades were settled, and we only had three things left to do. Go on a trip with the class for a week, go on another trip with the class for one day, and plan the ceremony. During the week-long trip, our class planned to perform the cup song on the graduation. Every class had to do something, with the whole class doing the cups and background vocals, and with me being the front singer. We trained a lot. I learned the cup thing too, even though I wouldn't do that later. It was amazing. Unfortunately, two of our classmates were injured in an accident. They came to the ceremony, but they couldn't participate in the cup song. Knowing that we needed these two, we asked two friends from our parallel class to help us out, and they happily agreed. Enter EM. Her kid, EK, was in our parallel class too, and she wasn't happy about the fact that we didn't ask her to join us. Her mom was yelling at us about how we dare to exclude her sweet little baby from our class singing. We'd explained that we had no space left on the stage for someone else, since we needed space for the performance. EK wasn't having it, so there was this almost 18-year-old woman crying to her like 15, 16-year-old classmates. EM looked at me and grinned. Well, EK could just be your lead singer then. She said, shrugging her shoulders. I looked confused and told her, Sorry, EM, but I already do that. We planned this for weeks, and now the ceremony is in three days. I don't think that... Then EK stops me. You just don't want me to be the school star. Now, I was even more confused. None of us would stay at this school, so why would she care about this? EK, I'm sorry, okay? But you can't learn the lyrics, learn to time everything perfectly with the rest of the class, and since when do you even sing? I asked her, she and her mom screech at me before running off to the principal. My class and I laughed it off, and we continued with our preparations. This was our last day at school, since we'd go to an amusement the next day, and then the other day the ninth graders would have graduation. Shortly before the end of our session, our class teacher came to us, looking quite down. EM and EK with raised noses and huge grins on their faces. LP, you and EK will sing together in the graduation. Since I don't want to stress her with timing, the rest of you will only do the cups. No singing, he said. Everyone was shocked and angry. We all worked so hard on this. Apparently EK cried about getting bullied and stuff by us, so either we'd let her perform with us or no one will perform. So she joined us. The next two days I wrote her and talked to her on the trip about which part she'll sing since we'd split it in two. She either ignored me and said, I'll talk later or stop bothering me. In the end, we decided that a minute before the ceremony started. I gave my friends a look which they returned and for my part everything went great. I saw those proud faces on my family and our teacher and I heard that the cup part went well too. I got a bit confused already when EK and I started to sing the refrain together. It sounded off. It was more sing talking. When EK had to sing alone though, oh boy, I noticed the grin on EM faded away and everyone looked quite funny. EK was totally out of rhythm. She screeched the text and I could hear how her throat got dry. She breathed loudly and missed every single note. I had to think about how much that had hurt later. 
If you sing wrong, it can hurt and your voice bands get damaged. You could tell she didn't warm up or do anything you should do before singing. She didn't even get the text right. I looked at my classmates and they were giving EM and EK death glares since they all worked their butt off for this. I then looked at our music teacher who just gave me this... Just go through it face. So when the refrain came again, I'd act like everything was okay. After the ceremony was over, my classmates and I talked through what happened there, and eventually laughed a bit. Then EM and EK came again. EK charged at me and pushed me away a bit. I looked at her, a bit mad but also confused. Before I could say something, the boys who were very overprotective about us girls in the class stepped between us and glared at EK with looks that could kill. EM then yelled at me, You little bitch! Destroyed my baby's big day! I then replied, EK didn't even know the right text. Plus, now looking at her, she was the one who threw everyone off. Ugh, you couldn't even hit a single note, said the EK. You were a total disaster. That's why I wanted to be the only lead singer. That's where our music teacher who taught me singing stepped in. EK, please leave OP alone now. The next time you get into a project like this last minute, you should at least try to learn the text and some of the singing methods. They all trained for this. For months. Either you can learn something they trained for in months and three days, or you can just stay out of it. He was quite mad. He took our class under his wings and helped us a lot with this project. Yeah, wanted to say something, but then my family came to us too. They are all huge and look quite intimidating. Yam just scoffed and pulled her daughter away. End of story. We laughed at this story while drinking some booze in the cups they clapped with. Even though I wasn't on school anymore, I continued to come to the school for the band to watch the kids and get some lessons from my teacher until 2020 when... Well, you know what came. Never saw EK again, but I met her brother a while ago. He's very nice. And he told me his sister is happily married now. Good for her. I just hope she didn't sing at her wedding. Five. So I had a feeling this would happen one day, but I didn't think it would happen so soon. Context. I'm gender fluid. Meaning, depending on how I feel, I will present myself in that way. Example. If I feel feminine, I will make myself look feminine. And if I feel masculine, I will make myself look masculine. Also, I'm male at birth, but I like to feel feminine sometimes, which explains me being gender fluid. Okay, story time. This happened over the weekend of last week. I was with my girlfriend out in public, and this was the first time in a while I had gone out in public looking feminine. And I mean feminine like full makeup, hair, cute dress, and some heels. We were heading to Starbucks to chill and chat since I've been busy with work. We walk in, order, and sit down. Reminder that right now places like Starbucks and others are opening up seating inside again, but you must have a mask. We chatted for a bit when this woman comes over to us with her son, like seven or eight, I don't know. <laughs> Not good with ages. Excuse me, but I overheard you talking. And you don't sound like a woman, so will you please go change into something more appropriate? Me and my girlfriend look at each other, confused. I look at this woman and say, I'm sorry, but how is this appropriate? And also, why does it matter how I sound? I can dress any way I want. Quick thing, my dress goes down below my knees, and I made sure no one could see up it. I have a picture of it on my Reddit page. Well, boys shouldn't be wearing makeup and dresses. They're for women. And you also don't want to confuse the kids. My girlfriend says, Miss, clothing isn't restricted to just one gender. Also, OP is gender fluid, and they can present themselves in any way they want. The entitled mother starts to look angry. I don't think she liked hearing I'm gender fluid. There are only two genders, and you should leave before I call the cops. At this time, people started to stare and a barista come over to see if everything is okay. Is everything okay, miss? No, this thing, she points at me, is being inappropriate for wearing this dress. I don't want my baby thinking he can wear women's clothing. I want them to leave or change. Sorry, lady, I can dress any way I want. Uh, plus, I'm not a thing. I'm a he. I was using she, her pronouns at the time, but I felt like messing with the Karen. 
Miss, there is no rule about clothing, as long as it's not showing anything inappropriate. OP can wear what she wants. I want to see your manager. These people need to leave. Miss, I am the manager, and you need to leave. You are creating a disturbance and bothering my customers. Or else I'll call the cops. Fine, but you just lost a customer. She stormed out, and the manager apologized for the inconvenience and gave us a free scone. But this isn't even the end of the story. About ten minutes later, the EM comes walking back in with two police officers and pointed at me. The two officers walked over to us and started asking questions. Miss, we are being told you are showing inappropriate things to people. We would like you to come with us so we can ask you some questions. I was so confused I looked at my girlfriend and her face was as shocked as mine. The EM had this smug look on her face like she'd won. Wait, what? I, I've been trying to have a nice day with my girlfriend. I said this in my normal voice so they would hopefully take the hint that the EM had lied to them. The officers looked at each other very confused. Sir? Miss? Sir is fine. Okay, sir. Uh, can you tell us about these allegations? I basically told them what happened and how I'm gender fluid, and if they wanted more proof, I told them to go ask the manager. The EM had been throwing in comments like how disgusting it was that I was wearing a dress, and how I should be arrested for being gay. I'm pan and also with my girlfriend, so that comment made me laugh. They talked to the manager, proving our side of the story. Police Officer 1 says, Okay, sir, well, uh, thank you for your information. Sorry about bothering you. Now you, they turn to the EM. You know I could have you fined or even arrested for false information about public nudity? So you better leave before I change my mind about arresting you. I've never seen someone leave an area that fast or angry before. After the incident, a bunch of people complimented me on my outfit and bravery for being my true self. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to The Impractical Proudness of Parents. I pop. Episode 66. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. If you enjoyed the video, then please do like and subscribe. If you want to comment, go right ahead. I'm not going to stop you. I'm, 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 it's, it's all good. If you, if you want to comment, that's fine. Uh, you don't have to. I mean, I thought you did. Uh, maybe, um... Tell me what Santa's getting you for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, I'll need to start thinking about Christmas soon, isn't it? We're, we're in the second... Well into the second half of the year now. Uh, there's a pleasant thought. Okay, and with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.